Hey Facebook friends and YouTube, this video will be about goodness. Um, I'm covering my last fruit of the spirit, which is goodness. I covered all the other ones. And um, it's really important to be a good person, obviously. And I think most people, I mean, I would think that 95% of the population at least wants to be a good person, that their goal is to be a good person. So let's look at what the Bible says about this. Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary in doing of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So um, sometimes it can be tiring to do good, like if you serve at church, you know, if you teach Sunday school, um, what else? Uh, a good thing that I've always wanted to do is take meals to like widows um, or like single moms which I highly recommend that some of you do if you have the time. Take food to widows and single moms. Um, but yeah, you will eventually reap a harvest in some way. It might not be money. It might be um, friends or I don't know. It might just be peace. But God can reward you in several different ways for doing good. So that's why it's a good thing to do good. Even if you think that it's not really a big deal or it's not really making a difference, um, you know, just keep doing it. If God leads you to do something, just do it, you know, like me making these videos. I'm just doing it because I think God wants me to do it. And it's like something that I can do to serve the, you know, public <laughs> while being a stay-at-home mom. So that's great. Hopefully they're helping people. All right, Psalm 37, 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Yes, that's good. Ephesians 2, 10, we are, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we were created to do good works. Yes. So it really matters, you know, how a Christian lives, I think, there is kind of like a hyper grace movement now where people don't seem to think that how you live matters a whole lot. Like, yeah, we're saved by grace and we're saved by the free gift from Jesus, but there's still expectations, which is countercultural and almost counter church teaching really. But you know, God does still have expectations of us. Um, we're not saved by our works, but we show that we are saved by our works, by what we do. And here's a good verse on that, Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. It's very good. So there you go. There's the expectation. God, Jesus, expects that we will have good works and that our light will shine before others, meaning that other people should see that we're good people, you know, that we as Christians are good people. I heard once that the statistics are no different between Christians and non-Christians as far as like divorce rates and, you know, all kinds of statistics, which is very sad. Um, we should be different. We should be better. Not that we should be, think that we're better, but we should be better <laughs> than the world, you know? Like there's even, uh, I guess, supposedly Christian pastors look at porn like that should not be happening. Um, you know, anyone who's Christian should feel that they are called to a very high standard of morality and behavior and character. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in my twenties and I went to church and my pastor was like, you know, it's not okay for you to come to church every Sunday, but then be sleeping with your boyfriend and think that you're fine. And I was like, wow, that was really good. Like that was a really hard hitter thing to say. I was pretty, I was very proud of him for being so bold, you know, but that's true. And like more pastors need to say stuff like that. Like it's not okay for you to be living a double life. Like if you consider yourself a Christian and other people think you're a Christian, then you better behave better than other people, better than the world. You know, you better be better <laughs> than, you know, other people. All right, James 2. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? 
so also faith by itself if it does not have works is dead yeah okay so uh being a good person part of that is doing good works and i'm sure people are wondering well what is that well i already said taking food to widows and single moms what else um giving away clothes i've given away clothes i don't even know like probably 30 times in my life Whenever I would go shopping and get new clothes, I would get rid of old clothes and I would just take them to Goodwill. Or if you happen to know like a family that needs clothes, then for sure give them the clothes and don't worry about the presentation. Just like, you know, put them in a bag, like a trash bag or whatever. And anyways, just like give something, you know, or if there's anything like for me, I have a general rule. If I don't use something for a month, then I get rid of it. <clears throat> Sometimes I throw it away, but. It's better to get rid of it, like donate it so that it can benefit somebody else. Um, if you have like way more food than you know you're going to eat before it expires, then give it away. You know, find some place that would need it, like a shelter, like a homeless shelter or something or an orphanage and give them your extra food. So there you go. There's some practical good works. Yeah. Just think of clothes and food you know who might need clothes and food so and who could I give that to Luke 12 33 sell your possessions and give to the needy provide yourselves with money bags that you do not grow old with the treasure mm -hmm. uh, okay provide yourselves with one money bags that do not grow old with the treasure in the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches and no moth destroys for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's never really preached about. And I think because nobody thinks that we should take Jesus literally, that we should sell all our possessions. But if there's some that you can sell, then you might as well. Yeah, like I said, if you haven't used anything in like a month, then you should sell it. Or try to, like, have a garage sale and give to the needy. So if you know anyone that is in need, then you should give them some extra money. I think people don't do that because then they don't want that person to depend on them. Like, they don't want it to be, like, a regular thing. But anyways, you shouldn't let your heart get hardened in that way and, like, come up with excuses, you know. If someone needs your help, you should help them. To an extent obviously you want them to take care of themselves too and be responsible okay um james 4 17 whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him it is sin so if jesus if the holy spirit is telling you something that you should do then do it and don't quench the holy spirit um you know anybody who's saved you know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So anyone who's saved will hear God telling them to do stuff. And, you know, you should do it. You shouldn't be like, eh, that's okay. Or, yeah, make excuses. You should just do it. <laughs> Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Colossians 3.23 Yes, so that should be our motivation for doing good because God wants us to do good and to serve people and help people. And you're doing it as unto God, not people. Like you're serving people, but you're doing it for God. Because that's what he wants you to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, then this one's really good. James 1, 20, James 1, 27. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this. To visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Yes. So visit orphans and widows. Yes, that is very important. Um, that was my motivation for having all my jobs with kids was that was that verse that I felt like, okay, I should, you know, take care of orphans. Um, like I kind of feel like any kid in preschool is kind of like an orphan. Well, really any kid in school because they're not, they don't get to be with their parents, which is why I'm hoping I will teach um, in a couple months. So, and then widows, you know, um, it would be good to go to nursing homes and visit widows. Um, 
I guess most people don't because they're not sure what they sh should do. I guess, like, just even going and, like, watching a movie, I don't know, like, you could bring a laptop and watch a movie with an elderly person or, like, play cards if they can play cards. Um, play chess if they like to play that. Like, you could probably ask, like, the front desk person, like, who's someone who would really like a visitor and what's their favorite board game? And then you could just bring that game and play with them. So, anyways... I pray this helps all of you and have a great day.